Vikes now. I am Dustin Baker, and we are back. Um, I had a very awesome road trip to Maine and the Northeast with my family. And now our vacations, for the most part, are done for 2023. So if you like the show, you'll get me throughout the week more often. No big, long-ass breaks. I'm here to talk Vikings football. We're 55 days away from the regular season. And training camp begins on Sunday with rookies reporting, and then two days later, everyone else. So I'm uh, driving home, trying to figure out what I want to do for you know my welcome back topic. And something keeps popping up when I think about Vikings football, and I'm going to share that with you guys and gals today. And it's what I consider the most fascinating aspect of this upcoming season. Upcoming season, excuse me. And uh, you know, just to lessen the suspense, I'll get it right out in the open. I think 2023 is a referendum on the Minnesota Vikings uh, on Kevin O'Connell to determine if he is a wonderful coach or if he was a lucky coach last year. To me, if you want to just shut off the episode right after that with no substantiation, that is it. I think we're going to determine this season whether or not O'Connell was really just lucky, took this fraudulent team 13 wins, or if the Vikings really have something special on their hand and a wonderful young head coach. So that is the most fascinating fascinating aspect of this season for me, and I'm about to explain it. So here we go. So the narrative all season long, I think once they jumped out to that hot start, beat the Bills in one of the wildest games you will ever experience, regular season or playoffs, but then got their asses kicked by the Cowboys, I think that is when firmly the narrative about where the Vikings frauds started because if you're going to beat the bills in mind-boggling fashion you can't go back home and get utterly crushed 40 to 3 was it to the Dallas Cowboys if you want to do that on the road I get it sometimes you lay an egg and it just sucks but at home trying to be a Super Bowl contender and getting your ass just thrashed by a pretty decent Cowboys team unacceptable so I think that was where the the dialogue started that the Vikings were overachieving frauds And to a degree, that talker was vindicated when the Vikings again lost at home to the Giants. So we're left with that sour taste in our mouth. I really wish the Vikings would have won that game against the Giants for O'Connell's sake. And then the next week just went and lost to the 49ers, like which was going to be inevitable. Or were they supposed to play the Eagles? No, I think they were going to play the 49ers. So in my heart of hearts, I really wish they would have won that game for O'Connell's sake. And then if they weren't good enough to win the next week, I get it. But it indeed was a scourge on an otherwise memorable and wonderful 13-4 and season that all of the, the talker about, oh, these guys are a bunch of bullshit frauds, was vindicated. Those men and women that said these guys aren't very good, they were right because you lost at home to the Giants, who also weren't very good. And that sets up an offseason to determine, all right, well, this new coach that the Vikings got, is he the real deal, or did they just somehow really wrap their arms around this situational master stuff and get super lucky. Uh, I think we're going to get a verdict this season and continue to get a verdict in O'Connell's career on whether or not this season that we just went through was just all a bunch of luck. I, I ref- it feels weird to me that the Vikings would be the team that gets lucky all the time, and then this guy just isn't that good. But we're going to find out. Uh, O'Connell's season was the best in Vikings history by a first-year head coach, the 13-4. and four before O'Connell stepped foot in Egan and in Minneapolis, it was Dennis Green, who in 1991 or 1992 was 11 and five. So that was topped by O'Connell. So you're 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 getting you got this setup that they moved on from Mike Zimmer after two really stale seasons where the Zimmer defense died. We wrote the obituary, and then the offense wasn't good to drag the rest of the enterprise to the postseason. Um, so it was really neat to get a guy who could come in and win 13 games but then in the aftermath immediate aftermath of the regular season in the playoffs there was no respect for Kevin O'Connell and I'm not just saying that as a guy who does a Vikings podcast and show here with you it's I think he got like a nibble one coach of the year award and if you look at it from afar and you say all right this guy this young head coach I think he was the second youngest last year behind McVeigh, you know, his uh, boss in Los Angeles, hardly got any coach through recognition. And then I challenge you after this show to go search coach rankings because uh, there's some outfits that have put those out. O'Connell is like 16th, 17th, 18th. 
And I understand he only has one year under his belt, but this man was not given very much credit from transforming an 8-9 team to a division-winning 13-4 team. It was kind of like, yeah, they won a bunch of close games. Who cares? They lost in the playoffs. And if you would have told us last year at the time, at this time, the Vikings were going to be 11-0 and in one-score games, you would be utterly excited because that was their problem the past two years was the defense coughing away points in the final four minutes of the second quarter and fourth quarter. And I would have told you, hey, the Vikings are going to finish 13-4. and I'd say, oh, wow, we got a coach of the year on our hand in Kevin O'Connell. But no, he got, got no recognition for that. It was like a, a fringe talker when they were – eight and one or eight and two the odds suggested O'Connell was like the fourth or fifth best to win coach of the year and then when the voting came out in the end the guy who in his first year led the team to 13 and four it was a nothing burger it was like folks didn't even care so I think this is setting it up for like I said at the top of the show a verdict a, a, you know a, an announcement of whether or not the Vikings indeed have a wonderful coach on their hands or just somehow this merchant of luck in his first year. So what do you, what do I quantify as a successful season? I kind of set, settled for the purposes of the show on the 10 wins theory. So even I will agree that the Vikings got lucky against the Bills. And then it, anytime you go 11 and 0 in one score games, you probably shouldn't have won all 11 of those. So I think that establishes that they'll probably be really good in close games again, but being unprecedented and undefeated isn't going to happen again. Therefore, the 13 and 4 is the ceiling. I think that the Vikings can look very much like a really good football team at 10 and 7 or 11 and 6. So I think to get close to this verdict, do they have a really good coach in Kevin O'Connell or a really lucky coach? I think a 10 and 7 record gets you closer to the wonderful part than the luck part. The implication for 9 and 8 or worse then year three is going to become a big deal because it will appear that 13 and four was lucky. And if they finish eight and nine this year, it'll be back to the drawing board, probably getting a new quarterback and then hoping for the best if, with this competitive rebuild. Now, nine and eight, and you reach the postseason, then you win that first game and then really look good in the divisional round. That's a different story. But right now, I think for O'Connell to solidify himself as a really good coach who who gets should be getting a lot of credit for 13 and 4 probably has to go about 10 and 7 this year. Anything south of that they're going to the the pundits and maybe even you will say, well, 13 and 4, that was a lucky year. They only finished 8 and 9 in 2023. Let's see how this dude does in 2024. So let's put it that 10 and 7 for the barometer of all right, you got a pretty good coach on your hands going 13 and 4 was destined to regress a little bit, and then boom, went, uh, what, 10-7, and seven, uh, and hopefully a division title. Uh, the, I think this, is, this can be considered a, a litmus test. So you, you try to figure out... You try to figure out, all right, is, is it really going to be 13-4 and four was a bastion of luck? I, I want to say no. I really don't think that everybody was absolutely correct that you can get to 13-4 and four by accident. Um, but I, I would tell you to put it in your back pocket that you're going to figure out by, what, January blah, 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 if O'Connell was truly uh, a really good first-year head coach or he got supremely lucky. Um, and then the, the homer take of this episode is if it is 13-4 and four, and then they follow it up again with 13-4 and four or 12-5, and five, I don't know if this is being talked about or if you've thought it, you know, in your heart of hearts. There is a, there's a really good possibility that the Vikings nailed the head coaching search last year, meaning that 13 and 4 out of the gate, let's say 12 and 5 the next year, 11 and 6 the following year, ba boom, you've got a really promising head coach. And I think for the last 6 months all we've been thinking about is all right, well, they're going to regress, but how much is it going to be? It's not guaranteed that they're going to get bad or not be good or effectuate this eight and a half win Vegas prediction. I guess the, the, to get to the point on, on this part of it is there is a palpable chance that when the Vikings hired Quasi Adafa Mensa and Kevin O'Connell, they really nailed those hires. 
And I think if the Vikings win the division again or finish 10-7 and seven and better, then you can say, we got a wonderful head coach on our hands. Of course, if they finish 8-9 and nine or 7-10 and 10 or something godforsaken worse than that, that doesn't mean that O'Connell will be fired or they'll be looking for a new head coach. It would just bring everything back in that 13-4 and four really was lucky. Then we finished 8-9 and nine and presumably in 2024 taking a stab at it with a new quarterback because I don't think there's any way in hell that Kirk Cousins will be back for the quarterback in 2024 if they don't reach the postseason in 2023. Uh, I basically think that Cousins needs to look great like he always does statistically and then once they get to the playoffs this time they win a playoff game whether at home on the road and then win another one or look really competitive, I think that would be the criteria to explore a Cousins extension into his age 36 and age, 17, uh, age 37 season. So I think this, on the whole, is the most fascinating aspect of the Viking season. There's oodles of storylines that will accompany this, but I think because the head coach is accountable for the entire enterprise, I think you're really going to learn if they have a wonderful head coach or they hired a lucky guy who just so happened to win 13 games in 2022. We shall see. You can comment and down below in YouTube comments tell me if this one is a nothing burger and if there's something that's more exciting. Uh, I think, too, for the long-term prognosis, who will be the next quarterback after Cousins if indeed this is his final year, that, that will probably supersede determining whether or not O'Connell is wonderful or lucky, but that's a 2024 thing that we will inevitably talk about a lot. All right, that's all I got. I'll be back tomorrow with something Vikings-oriented Wednesday with Josh Fry, and then now we're hitting the real red meat training camp preseason and eventually regular season. I'm going to start getting some more guests on to pick their brains about how they think this 2023 team will perform. Until then, skull, baby.